Hello Grade 7, how are you today? I hope you all are safe and well. Today we will learn about growing fuels. We have learned about how can we obtain energy and uh, we said that we can obtain energy uh, from uh, solar uh, solar cells or solar or water or wind or sometimes can buy fossil fuels and we said fossil fuels are non-renewable energy sources but others are renewable sources so if we want to use this fuel to obtain energy or to get energy how could we grow these fuels or not to see this or to know this, more about this, open your books on page 64 and follow me. Growing fuels, reducing pollution. Burning fossil fuels adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Even if fossil, if fossil fuels weren't running out, we should try to stop burning them. We mentioned in the previous lesson about when we burn the, these fossil fuels, this can release extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and it will increase the global warming problem because it, this can trap the heat inside the, the, the earth and it cannot escape and also we said we need to stop using uh, or burning fossil fuels because not just by adding this uh, atmosphere also they one day they will run out and we cannot have any energy source so we need to stop using them and use uh, renewable sources biofuels are also release carbon dioxide when they burn but the next crop takes the carbon dioxide back out to the uh, to the air again as it it grows the diagram shows how these crops recycle carbon dioxide. So look at this diagram here. Here we have the fuel production. We can use it to, re, uh, to, uh, to fill the, the, the cars, okay? but the cars can release carbon compounds uh, in the air. And these, when these uh, burns, they can release carbon dioxide in the air. And when they release carbon dioxide in the air, this can uh, get to the trees to make food, but not enough um, uh, for, for the fossils. They, they can not be enough for the trees to take them in. But if we grow the bio, if we grow the biofuel the biofuel will uh, will release carbon dioxide this carbon dioxide will go to the plants and the plants carbon can uh, can produce uh, fuel again so we can produce biofuel from it so why we call it biofuel because it's made from something natural something alive Fuels that recycle carbon dioxide are called carbon neutral fuels. So we call them carbon neutral fuels because they can take the amount of carbon dioxide in the air back again when the, the fuels releasing them. If we burn these biofuels, we said they can release carbon dioxide in the air. The same time, the plants, when they are growing, they can take this carbon dioxide back to the to, to the plants again, so they can neutral. They can they they can they don't leave extra carbon dioxide in the air. So that's why they call them carbon neutral fuels. So because they don't change the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, they don't increase carbon dioxide in the air. There are two main biofuels. We have biodiesel and we have bioethanol. So what is biodiesel and what is bioethanol? Biodiesel is made from plants, oils, and bioethanol is made from sugars. The bio means they are made from plants instead of fossil fuels because fossil fuels are creatures that fossils are creatures that did for millions of years and uh, bio means something alive so when they 
produce biodiesel, they can produce it from the plant's oil, but the bioethanol, they can make it from the plant's sugar. One of the plants that they can make the biodiesel from it, it's palm oil. Oil palms grow in Malaysia where there used to be a rainforest. Traditional farmers used to grow food for their families and local markets there. But now modern farmers, farmers sell the palm oil all over the world. The tropical conditions there are perfect for growing palm oil. So before they will, they were uh, these uh, palm oils or palm uh, palm oils. They they were uh, they were in Malaysia, and this uh, area were where uh, was a rainforest, and they were they used to grow this for traditional for uh, the, the for food, the traditional farmers or to sell in the uh, in the markets but now they are selling this oil all over the world because it's useful as uh, as a, a fuel this oil is used in 10 in uh, in 1 in 10 market items so it can include it can include or involved in uh, crisps something like crispies and uh, bread also. Now it's also being used to make biodiesel. So even in, in our uh, food, if we bought something, if we read the ingredients, we can find something called uh, uh, palm oil that get uh, uh, that uh, involved in the industry of, of the food. This is, uh, they can get it from the palm oil trees, uh, palm oil trees, sorry. Palm oil production makes a huge profit for many large country, uh, companies, but scientists have evidence that the process isn't really carbon neutral. So they are growing car uh, this palm oil, but the scientists, they have evidence that it's not like uh, that useful or harmless to the environment it's not carbon neutral it cannot uh, get back or change the um, it cannot like uh, uh, get back the, the same amount of carbon dioxide into the plants again hidden costs this fire was started deliberately hidden costs this fire was started deliberately farmers will grow oil palms on the the empty land so here in this picture farmers start to start uh, to start the fire on so like um on purpose they it wasn't by accident or something they are trying to burn all these trees to clear uh, a space to grow a palm oil, a palm oil trees Clearing forest by burning it like this release huge amount of carbon dioxide. Growing the oil palms will not take in all this carbon dioxide. The extra carbon dioxide will stay in the atmosphere. So that's why the scientists said that it's not really carbon uh, carbon neutral process because when they clear the the land by burning them they will release a huge amount of carbon dioxide in the air in this case even if they grew the plants or uh, in uh, the, this palm oil this palm oil cannot take back the the the, the carbon dioxide amount to the uh, to the plants again and remove it all from the atmosphere. Another problem is that energy is needed to produce biofuels. It takes more energy than is needed to make petrol from oil. So this is another problem. Most of the energy for making biofuels comes from burning fossil fuels. So switching Two, biofuels doesn't always reduce pollution because you are burning something to get biofuels. So in this case, it will not be 
um, carbon neutral and it will not redu reduce the pollution because you are polluting the air with the carbon dioxide. Bioethanol. Up to 20% of sugar cane plant is sugar. Yeast can use this sugar to make alcohol. The type of alcohol they make is called ethanol. When this ethanol is produced as a fuel, it's called bioethanol. The bio shows that it's renewable because it's made by living things. When we studied about microbes and microorganisms, we mentioned that yeast use sugar to reproduce and they are releasing alcohol as a waste product. So this alcohol, when it's made by the plants, we call, uh, this alcohol is called ethanol. But when it's produced as a fuel, we call it bioethanol because we made it by using a plant. If all the plant's biomass could be turned into sugar, it could all be turned into bioethanol by yeast. So if, if this mass of this trunk, the whole plant, that means the, the whole biomass, which is the, the, the amount of ma the living things, the, the amount of the material in the living things, or the, or the matter of the living things, if all this mass of the plant turned into sugar, we can convert this sugar into alcohol and produce bioethanol using yeasts. But plant cell walls are tough. Only a few decomposers can break them down. So we need decomposers to break down these walls to turn them into sugar. So one decomposer that is very effective is this fungus. So here the fungus can can be so effective. Why? Because we here we cannot see the most of it because the, its hyphae are inside the tree trunk. Their enzymes turn plant cell walls into a sugary mush. We can use these enzymes to turn fast growing plants into sugars that yeasts can use. So we can use these plants to make ethanol and save the sugar in, save in sugar cane for humans to eat. So here, this fungus has um, hyvae. They, ha they have, this fungi, these fungi, they have long hyvae inside the trunk. So they are turning the cell wall into sugary mush, something soft, okay? So if they, if, if, if we, by using enzymes, of course, enzymes are chemicals inside the living things that can break down the nutrients or the, the food into smaller pieces to absorb nutrients to make it easy to di digest. So these enzymes, we can use them to turn these growing, uh, grow fast growing plants into sugar. In this case, the yeast can produce ethanol from them. Bioethanol production is cheaper in warm countries where sunlight can be used to separate the fuel produced from water. The fungal enzyme are expensive, but they are expected to get cheaper in the future. So to get the fungal enzyme, it's, it's so expensive to get it, but they are hoping to be cheaper in, in, uh, in future. But here the bioethanol cheaper if they are producing this in warm countries because it's easy for the sunlight to, to, to be used in separating the fuel which is like uh, the, the, the ethanol from the water. Algal oil. Algae grow fast and they can contain lots of oil up to 60% of their biomass. So here we have algae. We studied algae before and we said algae can grow by using sunlight because it's green and it's like a plant. 
So here the algae can grow so fast and they have lots of oil. They have until um, or up to 60%. They could grow in contaminated water when we can see them outside if there is a pond, water pond or something. We can uh, see fungi in them, uh, sorry, algae in them, or on the top of the water. So they can use up the carbon dioxide power station uh, and, and use up the carbon dioxide power station make. So if they are, if they, uh, if they are growing in a polluted or contaminated water, they can take the carbon dioxide from the air that comes from the, the power stations and they can release oxygen instead of it. So they could clean up pollution and make fuel at the same time because it's something alive so we can use it to make biofuel. Algae could be grown out in the open in huge ponds. But scientists don't think this would work well. The ponds would soon be infected by microbes from the air. Instead, scientists want to grow algae in photobioreactors. Photo These are tubes surrounded by artificial light because uh, algae needs to have sunlight or light to start the photosynthesis because it's kind of, it's like a plant or kind of plants. So that's why they are growing them in tubes instead of why uh, open ponds. They make it easy to give the algae the right amount of sunlight, carbon dioxide and minerals. So instead of growing it in, in open areas or in open um, places, and protect it from the, the, the infection or from the microbes or the harmful microorganisms, we can grow it in photobioreactors that we can control the amount of sunlight, uh, sorry, not sunlight, it was artificial light, and we can control the amount of carbon dioxide and the minerals that it needs, and we can uh, even um, grow it better uh, in these uh, photoreactors. But the problem is that this bioreactors or photobioreactors is expensive because it, it, it costs money to build it, okay? Not like something to leave it outside and keep it to grow naturally. Photobioreactors are expensive but could be built anywhere. They would not use they they would not use up valuable farm land like the crops grown to make bioethanol. So we said that if they want to grow bioethanol, they are clearing up the the land uh, from the trees by burning, and they are destroying the nature, and they are adding too much carbon dioxide in the air. But even though the photo re photo bioreactors are expensive, but we can build them anywhere without cutting trees or destroying the nature or adding any carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So now let's go to the summary of the lesson, growing fuels. To help environment, biofuels should release less carbon dioxide than petrol diesel. Making biofuels can do un unintended damage to the environment by burning these um, these trees so so we don't we don't mean to harm the, the environment or damage the environment but we are damaging the environment by clearing up the, the trees by burning them newer biofuels should do less damage to the environment so this was all about growing fuels. I hope you understood the lesson. Don't forget to write these notes in your notebooks and don't forget the yellow box. I hope to see you soon, safe, and we will meet in a new lesson. Bye-bye.